next question. Quality evidence behind the biohacking genre of content gaining popularity, uh, like a coffee enema? I'm big on that. I suppose that might qualify. That's right. Example, 30 minutes of sunlight in the morning, particularly sunning your Yanni. Are you <laughs> into that? Do you, I had to look up how to spell Yanni. How do you think you spell Yanni? I don't know what that is. Okay, it's your peri... <laughs> Your urogenital triangle, if you're trying to sun that, oh, okay. that's your Yanni. How do you think you spell Yanni? Y-A-N-I? I don't it's know. It's Y-O-N-I. Obviously, okay. you're an amateur. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 30 minutes of sunlight in the morning, supplementing with electrolytes, hot and cold exposure for HGH, for human growth hormone, red light therapy, blue light glasses, nasal breathing, and mouth taping. Well, they went in on the examples here. <laughs> that's a lot of examples, and I, I think you know, uh, for the evidence on each of those things. I mean, it would just be a very, very long answer. Uh, as far as why do people believe in these things, um, some of them have been promulgated by very, very influential individuals based on either their own personal experience, like, oh, I did this, felt this, try it for yourself. That's the evidence, this anecdotal evidence. Some of these things have maybe a mechanistic plausibility in that there's a biological mechanism that seems like it might be beneficial to health, performance, or both, longevity in some cases, um, but has not been replicated in large human data sets, which is why we don't necessarily recommend this stuff. Look, if I could tell you that sunning your nether regions every morning was going to add years to your life, or life to your years, I would be up here. We would have a whole section on how to appropriately sun your urogenital triangle. We would give everybody a break in midday to That's go what get we would maximal do. sun we exposure. We would do it together, yeah, <laughs> privately, okay? Same thing, look, if there was a performance benefit to be had by supplementing with electrolytes before, during, or after a workout. We, we would do it. We would do it. <laughs> look, we choke down creatine on a regular basis, and the uh, benefit dry, for that I, is like, a dry scoop. Yeah, <laughs> straight to the dome. Um, the issue is that if there's not any sort of clinical, clinically relevant signal, meaning that data in humans that actually changes an outcome we care about, uh, it is very difficult to feel confident in recommending these things. And although we do not have the following of you know a Joe Rogan, a Rhonda Patrick, uh, Huberman, et cetera. There were some names in this question originally that I took out, but there you go. Okay, put them back in. <laughs> uh, although our following is not that big, we do feel like ethically uh, uh, charged to be responsible with our recommendations. And so until there are uh, quality data sets suggesting a benefit, we just can't recommend them. The only thing I'll say on here is with the mouth taping, for example, they do that in some individuals with obstructive sleep apnea who are having difficulties using like a nasal pillow device, and that seems to be a benefit. Had a sleep doctor slide into my DMs and show me some evidence on that. And so in that case, that seems fine. But if you're just doing mouth taping without like <laughs> the CPAP, <laughs> it feels like, I mean, you imagine going to bed, like you say to Lorraine, night, babe, and you just and she, and she goes to ask you, hey, Austin, where are we, when's our dinner reservation for tomorrow? And you go, mm-mm. <laughs> like, I just don't think that's going to work. Um, yeah, uh, last thing I'll say on this particular question with respect to human growth hormone, like, this is actually an extensively studied hormone as far as how it seems to affect uh, not only health and performance, and it doesn't seem like any fluctuation or like optimization of your HGH as an adult seems to matter. If it drops below a normal level, general badness, but any super physiological doses of HGH do not do anything except for general badness. Make your jaw grow, make your internal organs grow, but you don't get stronger, you don't gain more lean body mass, you don't get leaner, you don't recover from injury faster, you don't get an adamantium skeleton. All you get is a big jaw and a big gut and a lot of money missing from your wallet. So any sort of technique to optimize HGH, raise HGH, take HGH is a money grab. And some people are gonna be reading this like, well, I heard that HGH was great. Like, from who? And what are their ties to the industry? <laughs> Just saying, follow the evidence. Yeah, this, this whole genre of content really irritates me. I think that um, people in general these days are just it's like addicted to more information about anything and the more they're just regurgitating, you know, this latest thing from this abstract in this rat study or something like that. And, and here's why you should do this thing, just adding more and more and more to the list of things that people need to do every day to achieve perfect health. And then if I look and I take the population who is swallowing that content 
and I look at the article that we have on our website titled like where should my priorities be for health there are like seven mm -hmm. priorities for health on that topic and I take that population and I see what proportion of people in this population are meeting all of these top priorities that I would suggest for people's health to include meeting or exceeding the physical activity guidelines having adequate high quality sleep eating the dietary pattern that we're talking about with respect to you know fiber consumption uh, fruit and vegetable consumption saturated fat content adequate protein things like that etc among the other things on that list the likelihood that the people who are listening to that and trying to stack more and more and more optimization things into their daily routine are meeting all of the things on that list exceptionally slim mm. and so we have evidence for so much more effective uh, you know big time impacts on health outcomes from these very basic things but basic things are not super exciting and fun uh, and so, you know, nerding out on this stuff that they come out with every week uh, can be addictive in itself, I suppose, for some of these folks. And uh, yeah, I'm not really a fan, particularly when the evidence for it in humans is, is not good. So I am happy to ignore those folks, and I recommend you do too. <laughs> nice. Yeah, just to care less. That, I got it. Okay.